Now bacterial meningitis is relatively rare in small animals. Uh, unlike uh, some species like cattle, they don't have uh, a common meningitis. Usually it's secondary to something else. So they're septicemic from an endocarditis or a pyometra or maybe they've got a, a nasal passage infection and it erodes into the uh, brain through the ethmoid bone. Uh, so, uh, but uh, somehow they wind up with a meningitis and the etiology varies uh, in this regard. Uh, so uh, good things, we try to pick things again that penetrate that we don't have to rely on a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Uh, we'd prefer that. Again, human third generation cephalus borans, like ceftriaxone, don't have to know doses. Uh, kind of uh, in human medicine, the drug of choice for bacterial meningitis, or carbapenem, these are probably really good in terms of not much resistance out there. Then we get into things that are a lot cheaper that you can use, but may uh, not be quite as good. Chloramphenicol was our old standby. Still a really good choice. It penetrates well, relatively little resistance to it. Fluoroquinolones, we don't have a reputation for treating meningitis, but they penetrate, they have good activity, so they should work. And if you're looking really cheap on a big dog, trimethoprim sulfa will also go across. Uh, so these are all possibilities. Now, <coughs> I mentioned chloramphenicol. This was our standby. Uh, back at the beginning, I talked about cytal versus static uh, antibiotics. And generally, I don't care about that. One exception is the immunosuppressed animal, all right? Statics rely on white blood cells to kill the infection. So in an immunosuppressed animal, I prefer a cytal. But there is a little data, not firm, but a little data that suggests a cytal has a superior outcome in meningitis. So uh, that's the one knock about using chloramphenicol. <clears throat> uh, why that might be, we don't know. Maybe it kills a more rapid uh, kill or control um, before more damage is done. But still, chloramphenicol is a good choice. Now, not bacterial, but protozoal, we have toxoplasmosis. Uh, that's probably our more, most common meningitis rather than bacterial meningitis in small animals. Uh, again, here, uh, toxo does break down the blood-brain barrier reliably enough that we can use clindamycin. And this is the main one we use. In human medicine, they'll use sulfadiazine pyrimethamine. TMS technically could work if you didn't have either, but uh, typically in dogs and cats, we'll use clindamycin. Mostly, mostly cats because they don't tolerate the sulfa very well again, uh, and we just kind of, uh, since we're using it in cats, we've gotten used to it and we use it in dogs as well. <clears throat> 